Hello, this is Evan here, Molendinarius from latinum.org.uk and I'm talking about in this little uh, episode uh, a current project that I'm working on. I've started to produce the audio at latinum.org.uk for Virgil and the way I'm doing this to start with is by producing what's called a Hamiltonian reader uh, of Virgil. The way the Hamiltonian readers work is that the text of uh, the poetical text of the Romans is rewritten in the Latin in a form that allows a simultaneous English translation and the the particular text that I'm using is um, the the first book of Virgil's Aeneid and then I've got other texts for the the rest of the books with a literal interlinear translation on the plan recommended by uh, Locke, that's the philosopher Locke. Um, this is the third edition, and it was printed by the publisher to the University of London, uh, John Taylor, in 1829. So that's the, the text I'm using. If you want to find out more about the, the Hamiltonian method, if you go on to archive.org and search for a text which is called The History, Principles, Practice, and results of the Hamiltonian system. That's a long title, um, and it's by James Hamilton, uh, published in 1831, um, where he um, discusses the, the system um, of teaching Latin and other languages using this um, interlinear method. Um, and uh, it's uh, it sort of goes through. It's quite a discursive little book. It's interesting. Um, it's got anecdotes. Talks about his history of language study and how he came about doing it, and his efforts to teach Latin to um, rustic boys in an English school who barely knew English itself using this system. Um, firstly, with Phaedrus, and then um, uh, well, what other texts were in the in there? Um, the Eutropius the Virgil, etc. And there are several texts uh, on this Hamiltonian plan. So the way I'm doing it is I'm reading out the material in Latin and then English and then Latin phrase by phrase and progressing through. And then once that's finished, I will then go back and reread the Latin paraphrase of John Sterling of Virgil. And then once the Latin paraphrase of John Sterling has been read, then we'll go back and look at the original text and discuss various ways of reading it. Um, I'm not going to do a, a scansion reading. Such a reading already exists. You can find it on um, archive.org where the scansion is made explicit in the reading. I'm going to do a more natural reading of the text um, and we'll be discussing various ways the Romans may have read their poetry aloud. It's not exactly clear how exactly it was done, um, we know that the natural word order was used, the natural word accent was used, sorry, when reading the poetry, but it's not clear whether this was read in a rigid metrical form. Arma virumque cano troiae qui primo saboris, like that, or whether it was more flowing, so you were reading it for where the understanding was coming out very clearly um, and uh, the structure was there just underlying the whole thing. Um, so there, there are different schools of thought about how to, to go about reading Latin poetry aloud and we'll discuss those and the choices that I've made um, when reading the poem aloud and why I've made those choices. Um, I may even try uh, present it in different formats or certain sections, sections of it in different formats um, highlighting the, the, the different ways of, of reading and how Romans may have presented their poetry as performance poetry. Now remember that most students of Latin approach their Latin as words on a page and primarily experience it silently. So this whole thing of, of doing what the Romans did, which was to present things orally, is not commonly found. And exactly how to go about doing it, well there, there are, there's a lot of academic material to, to absorb and to 
understand and explain um, before one can go into this with uh, a degree of confidence. Um, so I'll be working with you on that and my thoughts on this as I go through it. There are a couple of extremely competent readers of, of Latin poetry online. Um, some of them are very good at expression, um, but then they fall down on quantity and accuracy um, of their pronunciation, but are extremely good in presenting the, the, the material in terms of expressiveness. And then there are other readers who are extremely technical and very good at reading technically um, in the meter, but then it comes across as sounding too mechanical and dead. And it's hard to actually get the excitement and meaning of the poem through. I don't believe that uh, these poems were written to be recited in such a mechanical, flat, uh, metrical manner, um, simply because after 15 lines you fall asleep. And uh, I don't think any Roman would have listened to uh, two hours of a poem um, recited in such a mechanical manner. Um, that's my thought on the matter. So the, the project is the, the Virgil project. The first sections of the Latin, English, Latin, Virgil are already available. Um, so you can go to latinum.org.uk if you wish to follow that project along. It will be a prime project uh, at Latinum um, for the next um, few months until it's completed. Wale, bye.